His mother used to say, patience, patience, okay? Wedding for the family. You rise, please. begin with uh, a big welcome uh, representing this family we are blessed and thank you for being here and uh, sharing this celebration of life uh, for Leonard John Christensen in reading the obit I learned several things first thing I learned that he has a middle name John and I kind of like that so as long as I knew him, I never knew he had a middle name, and it was John. So uh, let me uh, say just a couple of things, and we'll have an opening prayer. Uh, I, I told our sheriff, I said, I got on more clothes than I've had on in a year. I mean, I, I normally don't wear a tie back in the days when businessmen wore ties five days a week and on Sunday. And then casual Friday comes around and all of a sudden, yes, you know, no tie. And now you go to church, you won't find a tie. But I wore this tie for Leonard. Um, kind of reminds me of the story of the Catholic priest that had a bunch of children in this room and he was addressing the fact of his vestments what he wore and why he wore certain things and when he wore them. So he got through most of his wardrobe and then he came to the white collar 
And so he asked the question to the children. He said, why do I wear this white collar? And little Bobby was on the front row, and he was just waving his hand. He said, I know. And he said, okay, Bobby, why do I have this white collar on? He said, it repels fleas and ticks for two weeks. <laughs> Let me read one thing from my favorite Christian author, Max Lucado, and it's a very appropriate for today. Um, it says, I am God and not a human. I am a holy one, and I am among you. Hosea 11, 9. Reflect on those last four words. I am among you. Do you believe God is near? He wants you to. He wants you to know he is in the midst of your world. Wherever you are right now, he's here. He's present. And he's more than near. He's active. God is in the thick of things in your world. He has not removed himself from history. He has not chosen to seclude himself on a throne in an incandescent camp, castle. He has drawn near. He has involved himself in carpools, heartbreaks, funeral homes in our day. The Lord is near. You may feel alone, but there is never, ever a moment in which your face, you will face life without help. God is near. He is here. Max Lakeda. Uh, let me uh, open us in prayer, okay? Bow with me. Father God, thank you for this day, this very, very special day that we lift up the life and celebrate the life of Leonard Christensen. Uh, what a special and beautiful man he is. Uh, Lord, we thank you for everything you give us. Today, I just ask you to continue to bless and love this family. Um, it, it is um, an incredible turnout, and we are all here for this family and for the life of Leonard Critches. Father, we just love you. We lift you up in your special name that we pray. Amen. Okay, our first song for the day is uh, by Tori from Tori Christensen. Tori, she's going to sing one of your favorites, How Great They Are.
Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great shout of acclamation he'll take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow with humble adoration and then proclaim my God sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How Special, beautiful job. Thank you. Bless you. Okay. Our first uh, remembrance is what, is what the program calls them, but the first speaker is a man that I uh, have known for many years and respect, incredible respect for our sheriff. 254 counties, 254 sheriffs. He's the best, without a doubt. Uh, Parnell McNamara. Uh, is a man that loves the Lord and, and protects us 24 7. I love him to death. Barnell. Thank you very much, Johnny. Appreciate that. Debbie, Tate, Todd, Tracy, all the Christians and family, God bless every one of y'all. God bless Leonard. We've all got Leonard stories. Uh, some of them can be told in mixed company and a uh, group like this. I've got a couple of them. But in the last few days, I've paid attention to what people have said about Leonard. Leonard was such a, a unique individual, such a great guy, loving father. I remember when Tracy and Tate Todd, they were all rodeoing. He mounted them on the best horses. He always got them to the rodeos. And uh, he spent so much time with them. And uh, I know they all appreciate that so much. And Debbie, I want to tell you what the family has said about you and how they have described you. And that is a saint and every one of them how much they appreciate how you have pulled the family through these tough times. And every one of them have described you as such, and you, you truly are. I heard Leonard described as a true friend, a party guy. He's got a heart of gold, a very unique individual, a local icon, generous and giving. All of those are true and many more. 
And uh, I'm going to tell you what happened to me at the grape one night. I quit drinking 32 years ago, so the grape is about the roughest place I go now. Unless we're arresting somebody and pulling them out of a beer joint somewhere. But uh, anyway, I walked in there one night, thought I was looking pretty good. And there was a group of guys in there and they said, hey, there's old super cool. I said, man, that's pretty nice. Hey, guys, I appreciate that. They said, no, we weren't talking about you. It's the guy behind you. And I turned around and it was Leonard. <laughs> and he had this leather bomber jacket on. It's when he had kind of long hair and he had it all combed back. I thought, he is super cool. And he wandered right on in there and uh, Anyway, it, it, it hurt, you know, I was about hurt for, I don't know, not that long, maybe 10 or 15 years, but I finally got over it. And uh, anyway, I spent quite a bit of time just visiting with Leonard and doing some things with him over the years. I always admired him. He was a straight shooter, and believe me, as you all know, he would certainly speak what was on his mind. I was in there one night, we're sitting in the back room with Leonard and three other guys. I was feeling pretty good about myself. And Leonard had had a few and he just blurts out, says, how much do you weigh now? I said, well, I don't know. I haven't been on the scales in a while. So, well, I suggest you get on them. So I'm going kind of, what in the world? Why would he say something like that? So anyway, I went and got on the scales and he was right. I put on several pounds. Somebody else came in another night. He said, look at that screwball over there. Can you believe he combs his hair like that? I said, well, at least he's got some. <laughs> if I had some, I may comb mine like that too. But he was, uh, he was certainly a unique individual. Um, he had incredible parties, large parties. Um, I remember him from the rodeo days. Um, I absolutely loved visiting with him about his vintage cars. He loved those cars. He put his heart in them. He had taken a rust bucket and he would repaint it, put a new motor in it, and fix it up and do upholstery and it looked like a brand new car. I don't know if y'all saw the black 57 Chevy out there in front as you came in. Uh, that was Leonard's car. And uh, I was able to, uh, to get that at some point. He never would sell it to me, but uh, I finally talked him out of it, and I appreciate the family uh, letting me have that car. I, it's almost a daily driver. I drive it all the time. I slap the sheriff stars on it, and it gets a lot of look. I've got a little red Kojak light put on the top. Somebody said, uh, are you in your second childhood? I said, oh, no, I passed that a long time ago. I'm in my fourth childhood. <laughs> Charlotte and I get in that car, and every time I get in it, I think of Leonard. It's got a, a new fuel-injected LS engine, got the headers and glass packs, got cutouts, uh, runs those exhaust right out through the headers with a flip of a switch, makes all kind of noise. So we get on the, we cruise the valley. We pull in Sonic, get a cherry lime made, head on down, orbit the circle. Uh, the hobnob, as some of y'all remember, it's not there anymore. Chatham's in, but uh, you know, the Sonic's the best we can do. When we come back, we were on the, uh, the valley for Rally on the Valley, uh, where all the hot rodders are and all that. So Charlotte and I had the headers open. We we're talking about Leonard. We're cruising around. And uh, I said, you know what? I just realized we're the oldest people on the valley right now. <laughs> we're definitely both of us in our fourth childhood. So I think about Leonard every time I see the car, every time I get in it and drive it, and I appreciate it so much. Um, Leonard will be remembered for a lot of reasons, and they're all good. He'll be remembered for his smile. When Leonard would come in a room, he would light it up. I don't care where you are, he was going to be the center of attention. He just had that personality when he came in. Everybody liked him, everybody loved him. They wanted to talk to him, wanted to be around him. You know, you want to be around people that make you feel good. And outside of the ones that he was 
denigrating because of the way they had their hair cut or something like that. Everybody loved him. And he was just a great guy. He was a true friend. And um, I just I appreciate the relationship that our family had with the Christiansons. And um, all of, I see so many good friends out there. I think we all know most everybody here. And uh, thank y'all for being here, honoring Leonard and Debbie and the entire family. So anyway, we'll remember Leonard in so many good ways, especially his smile and uh, the way he made us feel when we were around him. Thank you, Parnell. And I'm glad you mentioned the fact about his smile of all the people that I've been blessed to know, women and men, he had the most beautiful smile of any person, period. It was radiant, it was like someone turning a light on. And it, it just, what I remember him, of all the things, his smile. Uh, our next speaker, and I met him yesterday at the visitation, uh, Brother George, where's Brother George at? Come on up here. You're next, my man. Parnell, I want to thank you for those kind words you said about Leonard. They were all true. Like he said, we're brothers. Leonard and I were brothers for one year and nine days apart. And I want to thank everybody that's really come here to see him. He would really love it because he liked a lot of people. On behalf of Debbie, his his, Debbie, his wife, Debbie, his children, Tate, Tracy, and Todd, and their spouses, his grandkids and their spouses, and his grand, great grandkids, I want to thank you for coming. Leonard and I lived in Bellmead. We were raised in Bellmead, along with our older brother, Kenneth, who died in 1985, and our mother, who died in 2005. Our dad had died before I was born and before Leonard was one year old. But we always had a roof over our head. We was always poor. We didn't know it at the time. We know it now, you know, but, uh, you know, our mother always kept, I had a fifth grade education. I always kept a roof over our house, clothes on our back, and food to eat. And what else can you ask for? Leonard was a cowboy of our family. He was the only cowboy. He started riding horses when he was about 12, 13 years old. And at that time, he could ride them as good as anybody. He's been riding for years. His kids, Tate, Tracy, and Todd, followed him. Of course, Tate, he went above and beyond. He rode bulls. You know, bulls are those big, mean animals. They weigh about a ton. And when I found out about Tate work riding bulls, I told him I'm going to buy him a psychiatrist. <laughs> when Leonard lived in Hewitt, he had a calf roping uh, system like you see at the rodeos. And he got up on his horse and a cat came out and he roped that thing before you could blink your eye. And I didn't know he could do this. And then he tied his legs like they do in a rodeo before you could blink your other eye. Boy, and I was quite impressed. He became a good mechanic when he was about 14 years old. He worked with our cousin, a guy named Joe Waxman, who lived down the road from us. And it was nice to have a mechanic in the family. Because, you know, we, we did a lot of drag racing, and every time my car get tore up, there was Big Brother to help me fix it. Sure was nice. Uh, 
after we graduated high school, Leonard had a 57 Chevy and I had a 56 Chevy. He spent a lot of money on his 57 Chevy, just making it, he wanted that thing to be the fastest car in Texas, in Waco. I had a 56 with a six cylinder in it. Now you can't race anybody with a six cylinder against eight cylinder. So he went to the pound and found an old eight engine uh, shovel a block laying in the mud. And that's what he got from me. Put it in my car, and would you believe my car could be his? Even <laughs> it was, I loved it. I hope most of y'all got to see his classic car. He did a fabulous job on those. He had 33 classic cars. Uh, my wife and I went out there one day and we saw all his cars. Every time we'd get close to the car, he'd say, don't touch the paint, don't touch the paint. <laughs> and so we went uh, out to eat after we went to his house and he came up to our car as we were leaving and my wife told him, don't touch the paint, don't touch the paint. <laughs> Leonard always told everybody that he was younger than I was. And I would tell those same people that he was the before and I was the after. Leonard, when he was about 12, 13, oh, he was in high school, he was 10th grade, about 10th grade high school, he was a good baseball pitcher. I, but I'm the only one that ever caught him. And nobody else knew that he was a good pitcher to get those real fast. After I got through catching him, I had to go ice my hand down every time. One time, we, you know, we did this in our bar yard uh, uh, amongst the uh, cow turds and the chicken doo-doo. And one time there was a big cow splat, veneer splat, that looked almost like a home run, but a uh, home, home plate. And he wanted me to stand behind, sit, squat down behind him. And I told him, I said, Leonard, our mother didn't raise any dumb kids, but, but she sure raised a smart out one. Because <laughs> he would have, I mean, tell you, he would have hit that manure pile with the first throw. He was that accurate with that fastball. And you can guess where the manure would have went. When he was, uh, uh, younger, too, he went to a calf scramble down in Houston. Uh, this is where you have about 50 boys in an arena and 20 calves, and you had to catch one of them calves to, to uh, uh, get a certificate for $200 for a cow. And he caught one. I, I had no doubt that he would. Uh, he brought a certificate home for $200 back in, that was 1958. Back in 1958, you could buy a lot of cattle for $200. When we was younger, our, our mother, we didn't have an indoor bathroom. We had one of them outdoor bathrooms. I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of you people might have had that too. And uh, we'd have to take a bath in a wash tub. And my mother, she always did everything by age. Leonard, my Kenneth was oldest. He took his bath first, then Leonard. Then, I, of course, I was after Leonard. And I always made sure he went to the restroom before he, he got in that tub. Because <laughs> when he got out, he would have went to the restroom then in the tub, and I would be next, you know. <laughs> I tell you. He, uh, Leonard was raised a Catholic. Uh, we would, when we were in junior high, we'd ride our bicycles about 10 miles to St. Joseph Catholic Church in Bellamy, and we'd serve mass. And it wasn't a problem of riding our bicycles or serving mass. The problem was just getting up on Saturday at seven o'clock in the morning. Because during the week at school, we was late to school almost every day. And every time we'd go, uh, come in, we'd have to always go to the principal's office sign a tortoise slip. 
And every time we put on a, this is the first time I've been late. And we, we thought we were snowing in people, but I, I don't think we were. After, in 1958, too, Leonard and I built a bathroom, our indoor bathroom. Finally, they had an indoor bathroom. And boy, we thought we moved up to the east side. Now it was something else. The jobs Leonard had, he started out as a busboy at Brooks Cafeteria. I don't know if ever, anybody's ever eaten there. It's a, one of the best places in, in Waco to eat. And I took over when he left. And then he went to work at, had worked at a service station. He worked at General Tire. He worked at Cameron Mills. He worked at, he drove a gasoline truck, one of them big old long gasoline trucks. I don't know how he did it, but he, he learned to do it. Then he went, his first real job was at Lockridge and Priest. And when he first started there, I think what he knew about air conditioning was that it cooked both cold air. But he really became a master of it, and really, it was a good job for him. Then he went on to building homes and businesses around Waco. I heard he remodeled George's restaurant, too. You know, I went to Baylor, I don't know why, because all my classmates were going to college. I couldn't afford it. And I'm, my grades wasn't very good in high school too either. First semester, I, of course, I went, barely had enough money to go. So I wasn't going to go to the second semester because it just didn't have the money. Well, here comes Leonard, meets me at the student union building with $700 in his pocket to pay my tuition and, and books. Uh, now, $700 in 1961 was a lot of money. It's not a whole bunch today, but it was then. And he, work and saved it so I could go to school. I want to thank two women who are very important in his life, Linda and Debbie. They made his life a pleasure because Leonard was not a person to live alone. Uh, he just wasn't that type of guy. And we would, my wife and I, when we would come down to the rest of them and see Leonard, Debbie would always meet us there. And Debbie would tell him as soon as he goes in, as soon as she went in, he, uh, she'd tell him, well, pucker up, give me a kiss. And I told Debbie, I said, I never seen him turn one down. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you for listening. Thank you, George. Appreciate that very much. It's an honor to ask Debbie Richardson to come up. How do you describe Debbie Richardson in just a few words? I, I'm not smart and I don't have enough adjectives. I just know that she is a beautiful, beautiful lady inside and out. And I love her to death. Debbie? Yeah. Okie dokie. Oh Lord, this is beautiful. This is just beautiful. Um, how I ended up with Leonard Christensen. <laughs> One night 30 years ago, Melvin Lipsitz gives me a call and says, I'm at steak and ale with a guy you need to meet. Come on up here. I thought it was 8.30 at night, and I said, no, just tell him to call me tomorrow for lunch, and I'll talk to him like I've known him forever. So he did. Leonard called. We set up the lunch, and Leonard calls Melvin and says, is this a joke? And Melvin goes, no, what's wrong? He said, well, she sounds like she weighs 250 pounds and plays for the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> so 
No, he goes, oh no, she's really just a little lady. She just has a real deep voice. <laughs> so, anyway, so it was cute. So I get ready to go to lunch and the receptionist comes in. I mean, she's just so excited. And so we go to lunch and I come back and everybody at work is just standing there going, well, how did it go? I said, well, I think I'm married. And he said, you do? How come? I said, because he told me what we were going to do every weekend for six months. And Leonard did always say, and we did it too, didn't we? I said, we did. Okay, so why, why I fell in love with Leonard Christensen first was his smile. He had such that affectionate smile. Every time we would get ready to go somewhere, he'd get dressed and come out and go, how do I look? Now, does this look all right? And I go, what difference does it make? They'll never get past here. And he would stop there. Oh, and then he liked that. <laughs> Secondly was his confidence. He grew up poor, not even having indoor plumbing till the ninth grade. His dad passed away when he was a year old. But because of all of this, he learned how to fix anything, whether it be build a fence, fix up a car, plumbing, etc. He attended La Vega schools starting the first grade in this door and ending up a senior graduating out the other side of the building. Leonard attended drafting school and went on to work for Lockridge Priest. He eventually became a third partner. Mr. Lockridge and Mr. Priest were good businessmen, but Leonard Christensen was the one that brought it to his peak. His smile, his confidence, and his work ethic <clears throat> brought in an enormous amount of business. Leonard was a self-made man. This is about when we, the time we met, I was about to be 40, he was about to be 50. As we dated, I began to beat his family. As you know, it is not easy to get in to the Christensen family. They are a close-knit family. But as time went on, we were all friends, even me and Linda. On our second date, he said, I can't believe you don't know my first wife. She works at Wanda Fannin, where I was with. Anyway, I stopped for a minute and I said, is she brunette? Yes. I said, is she sexy as hell? He said, yes. I said, I met her today and we had a blast. And I didn't know her. I just met her, but anyway. So Linda and I have been together for every birthday, ball game, graduation, what have you. Okay. Lastly, what I loved about Leonard was his intelligence. He was the smartest man I ever knew. He was always thinking ahead. He taught his children and my son, Casey, to always stay one step ahead of your friends. You be the leader. He also always admired my son for doing what he asked of him. And when my son went off to college and on to New York City, Leonard would always say, you'll never have to worry about Casey. He will always find his way. And he was right. And for that alone, I'll love him forever. Leonard and Linda have three of the finest children you'll ever know. Tate, the oldest, graduated from A&M and went on to own Barsh Construction. He was even asked to come back to A&M a few years later to speak to one of the graduating classes. He is a no-nonsense person but extremely kind and will be there whenever you need him. Then there's Tracy, so beautiful and absolutely a ball of fire. She is her daddy's clone. She was an ace in every sport, including rodeo. The boys were good, 
but Tracy was a natural, just like her daddy. She is so smart and witty, and we always said she should have been a lawyer. And then there's Todd, the macho love bug. <laughs> He's so sweet, even though he's so rough and tough, but he's so sweet. He is in the construction business also, and like his daddy, he loves the outdoors and gets right in there to work with the guys and get dirty and get the job done. So, through all the thick and thin and ups and downs, I will always be proud to be a Christian son. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> What's the old expression? She knocked it out of the park, okay? Casey, come on up. Casey, <clears throat> Halton's gonna sing our last song, and it's one of my favorites, Amazing Grace. Casey.
uh, your, this entire family uh, touches me. Thank you again, Debbie, for doing a tough, tough job. Uh, I really respect you so much for what you've done and what you've said over the years. Uh, closing prayer. I'm just going to ask everyone to stand. Is that okay? Okay, pray with me. Father God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this celebration of life. Thank you for this family, what they stand for, talking about things like work ethics, about love, about having fun, about loving you. Father, uh, we are so thankful for all of the little things that you give us, the list we are so blessed as everyone in this room is incredibly blessed the list of thanks is endless but if we go to the very top of that list the very top we thank you for your son jesus and it's in his special and beautiful name that we pray amen 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 you're dismissed I'm sorry. I'll meet you about George's at the party, the George's party room on Slate. George's party room after you, you could leave now. Yeah. Sir? Stay in place. Okay. Wait 15, 20, 30 minutes. Or go there and have a big O, okay? <laughs> Bless you all for being here.